Thank you very much. Might I ask that we all please stand for the presentation of our nation's colors. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Present oh. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order! Oh. Prepare to post. Ready? Two. Right face. Forward long. I would now like to invite Mary Moreland to the podium for the singing of our national anthem. Ms. Moreland. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting Thank you, Mary. You may all be seated, please. This time I would like to introduce Pastor John Bell. John is a retired, uh, excuse me, John is a retired UNC pastor currently living in New York who provides pastoral care for servants in in Red Lion. John has had involvement in and with emergency responders through his wife, Marissa, who was an employee of Community Life Team and through active street ministry with Bethesda Mission for a number of years. Currently, John has a son who is a disaster relief responder with Team Rubicon. John cares deeply for those who often risk their lives to come to the aid of people experiencing trauma and disaster in their lives. Thank you, Pastor Bell.
Will you join me in prayer, please? Good and gracious God, today we come before you with heavy hearts as we remember the events of 9-11. For some of us, today is a mixed bag of emotions. We hurt deeply for those who lost their lives and those who lost their loved ones. We mourn the nearly 3,000 who died that day. We are humbled by the bravery of the first responders. We continue to grieve with our neighbors in the loss of our national innocence, our false sense of constant safety. As we think of the way New York and D.C. responded with churches, synagogues, and temples, opening their doors to all people, as we remember strangers carrying each other out of buildings, as we are reminded of how those who had much shared with those who had lost, and as we recall the bravery of the passengers and crew of United Airlines Flight 93, our pride welds up in us. Yet today, we struggle, not wanting to get caught up in the Macabre celebration, the sometimes too prideful remembrance of loss. We still remember how the world responded supporting us and even declaring us one people. Today, we are all Americans, the headlines read. And we remember the immediate call to war and the more than 1.5 million deaths from it. God, of all people. Teach us to be patriotic, but humbly so. Teach us to see the frailty, beauty, and value of life in light of this tragedy, rather than using it to elevate trivial difference to the heights of divisive reason for hatred. Remind us of the response of the American people and not the response of the government and its war machine. Remind us of the way the true heart of this nation's people was revealed in open doors, open arms, and open hearts. May we never forget that on that day we did not focus on nationality, wealth, education, sex, or sexuality. We focused on need, on humanity, on love. Father, call us back to that place in our hearts instill in us the deepest sense of call to be that people once again. We remember all those who even today still suffer from the loss. From New York City to Iraq, the tragedy has deeply and profoundly impacted millions. May we continue to heal and help each other just as we did that day. And may we also remember today those first responders and their families who have sacrificed their lives in their effort to serve others throughout this past year. Lord, today, grant us peace. Amen. Thank you again, Pastor Bell. You may be seated. I'd like to welcome everyone and thank you for coming. We appreciate your attendance at this time when EMS is sometimes short on resources. We're glad that you have come here to honor EMS providers who have lost their, line in, Nate, their lives in the line of duty. This is the eighth annual memorial service, and my name is Doug Gerritsen. I'm the chairman of the Pennsylvania EMS Provider Foundation, who sponsors and hosts this event, along with the Bureau of Emergency Medical Services. For those of you that don't quite understand my attire, I am in cycling attire from having ridden a bicycle along with many other people who are in the audience today. Today completes our third annual EMS Memorial Bike Ride, where some 40 participants, members of our industry, EMS providers, and support staff cycled our way from the Flight 93 Memorial in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, starting in the rain on Saturday and making it here to Harrisburg for this memorial service in the rotunda. We do that for a couple of reasons, and one of those is the camaraderie that comes with the friendship 
of being part of this unique group of EMS providers and for us to not only enjoy that friendship but to share with one another and support support for some of the scars of the things that we witness or the tragedies that we deal with each and every day. But more importantly, we're here to honor the memory, honor the memory of 49 EMS providers in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania who lost their lives in service to others. And for that reason, we ride to bring attention to that and to bring you here today to participate. At this time, I would like to introduce Dylan Ferguson, the director of the Bureau of EMS. Good afternoon. On behalf of Governor Wolf and Secretary Rachel Levine, the Department of Health, and all of us at the Bureau of Emergency Medical Services want to extend our sincere appreciation and gratitude for your participation in this year's Memorial Bike Ride. Your participation in this event and others like it is a personal sacrifice from a perspective of time, physical, and mental effort, certainly doubled this year by the treacherous conditions that you found with all of the rain. Each year, this event commemorates, remembers, and pays respect to EMS providers who paid the ultimate sacrifice. It gives us an opportunity and a reminder for all of us to pause and remember those who gave literally everything they had to the communities that they served. EMS providers across the Commonwealth are certainly no strangers to sacrifice. Each and every one of you continuously give so much each and every single day without consideration of your own personal needs. Our families also share in that sacrifice, whether it's a spouse or family member missing you at long hours at work or missed family dinners, birthdays, or kids' sporting events. So on behalf of the Pennsylvania Department of Health, we say thank you for your service, and we thank you for those who support you, for without them, you would not be able to do what it is that you do. I know that your presence on this ride means a lot to the families of our fallen brothers and sisters. Your acts of kindness and simple support really do matter. Tragedies often leave us feeling powerless, but groups like this doing what they can help lift this tremendous burden for EMS families that have suffered these personal losses. Efforts such as this highlight the essence of the closely knit family among, EM, the, among the entire EMS community. While I've only had the privilege of being part of the Pennsylvania EMS community a few short months, I've been a member of the, the EMS family my entire adult life. And one of the defining characteristics that I find time and time again is that it doesn't matter who you are, where you work, or what type of work you do. If one member of the EMS community asks for help from another, we will all drop whatever we are doing to help one another. Like most families, we are, we are a group and we are a team. We win together, we lose together, we celebrate and we mourn together. And defeats are softened and victories sweetened because we did them together. So today, as part of that brother and sisterhood, we mourn, we remember, but we also celebrate. We celebrate the contributions of those who have left us too soon, and I am sure that at some point through the ride, there were some stories told in a fashion that demonstrated the unique camaraderie that only EMS providers and their families could understand. EMS today is a much different profession than it was 20 years ago. The types of threats and dangers that we face on the job are not only different, but they're much more prevalent. Despite these ever-evolving threats, EMS providers across the Commonwealth step up to answer the call from their communities over one million times each and every single year. According to the Centers for Disease Control, more than 22,000 of us will be seen in a hospital emergency department each and every single year due to work-related injury and illness. Most of those injuries are what we would expect, back injuries, strains and sprains. There are also a growing number of line-of-duty deaths and injuries that relate to cardiovascular issues, such as heart attack and stroke. Most of us are aware of how hard it is to take care of our bodies in this demanding line of work, but we must find a way to make it a priority to get regular exercise and to eat a few more salads and maybe a few less cheeseburgers. And as members of my staff often point out, 
I need to do a better job personally of showing leadership on that issue. Cardiovascular disease is one of the top contributing factors in line of duty deaths for serv emergency service providers of all types. Another area of danger that we face is something that occurs on each and every single call, driving the ambulance. According to NHTSA, on average, there's 29 fatal crashes of an ambulance each and every single year. There will be 33 fatalities from those accidents. The best way we can protect ourselves on the road is to drive defensively, wear our seatbelt to ensure that we can return home to our families at the end of our shift. A trend that's been developing in recent years has finally reached a tipping point. For the third year in a row, the number of our nation's first responders committing suicide has once again outnumbered those who were killed directly in the line of duty. Not only must we make a cognizant effort to take care of our bodies physically, we must take care of ourselves and our EMS brothers and sisters mentally as well. We must foster a culture where it's okay to reach out for help, where it is seen as a sign, not as a sign of weakness, but as a sign of courage. There exist resources nationally at the state level and in our various EMS regions to support provider mental health. Please use them. As a profession, we must encourage a culture of safety. As part of this culture, we must study, learn from, and all in an effort to prevent these losses from occurring again and ultimately to be able to stop adding leaves to the tree of life at the National EMS Memorial. To the family members and co-workers who have lost loved ones, I am truly so sorry for your loss. I have no way to reduce your pain, though I wish I could. But I thank you for sharing your loved ones with the EMS community so that others had the opportunity to live. To our entire EMS workforce, Take care of your patients, take care of your partner, take care of yourself, and most importantly, take care of those who take care of you. I wish blessings and safety for everyone here and to our entire EMS family across the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I thank you all for the opportunity to be with you today, and until next time, be safe and be well. Thank you. Thank you, Director Ferguson. I would like to introduce at this time Nate Silcox, Executive Director of the Office of Senator Randy Velakovich, part of the Center, Sentence, excuse me, part of the Senate Veterans and Affairs and Emergency Preparedness Committee. Nate. Thank you, Dylan. I'm feeling a little guilty after that cheeseburger I just ate, so we'll have to eat, eat better tomorrow. But thank you very much for inviting Senator Velakovich to be here. Uh, this afternoon, unfortunately, he could not be. I uh, was asked to read a letter from the Senator. Dear friend, thank you for inviting me to participate in the Foundation's 2018 EMS Memorial Service. I sincerely reg regret that I'm unable to attend. However, please know that as a former 27-year municipal police officer, I absolutely appreciate the critical roles that EMS plays, providing emergency response and serving as the frontline delivery of health care. And you do this under extraordinarily adverse situations and unfortunately with little to no pay. On this point, the Senate Resolution 6 Fire and EMS Commission understands that you are in a crisis mode in Pennsylvania and we are working towards making our recommendations, many of which will be aimed at reversing this trend, restoring refunding that was previously used to balance state budgets, increasing MSOF fines, and providing more flexibility in the delivery of services. While I will not be serving in the General Assembly to help implement the recommendations, the Senate and House Veterans Affairs and Emergency Preparedness Committees recently held a joint hearing to help ensure that the committee members are tuned into the issues that will soon be, uh, come before them. In the meantime, today's ceremony is to remember those that have given their lives in the line of duty. Earlier this summer, the National EMS Memorial honored the memory of David Blausen of Wilkinsburg, Pennsylvania, who died in the line of duty August 5, 1971 from burn injuries sustained from an, an oxygen explosion while he was driving an ambulance with the Wilkins Churchill Ambulance Service. My heart goes out to the families of these heroes. I thank entities such as the Pennsylvania EMS Provider Foundation for continuing to remember their service. 
If there's ever anything I can do to assist you, please do not hesitate to contact me or any member of my staff. Sincerely, Randy Blakovich, State Senator. Thank you, Doug. Thank you very much, Nate. At this time, I would like to introduce Representative Mark Dillon. Representative Mark Dillon represents part of Berks and Lancaster counties. He currently serves as the Secretary of the House Veterans Affairs and Emergency Preparedness Committee. He's a certified state Pennsylvania emergency medical technician and has been a very vocal advocate of ours on EMS issues. For that, we thank you. Representative. Thank you very much. Um, I want to do, uh, just acknowledge uh, a couple individuals here. I don't think they're going to have a speaking opportunity. Representative Gillespie over there. Um, I know you were a paramedic, if I'm not mistaken, at, at one point. Representative Ryan here has been on the front line. Uh, of the war on terror, and one of my colleagues will be speaking in just a moment. Um, I, I do not have any prepared remarks, but I would like just for a couple moments to share my heart um, with you. I just left the Berks Military History Museum uh, that I started in Berks County, and we had a group of senior citizens come in on a lunch hour. And immediately as you enter the museum uh, to the right, we have a display case. And uh, it has the uniform of Dan Schrader. As far as we know, he was the last Pearl Harbor survivor uh, in Berks County, and he passed away about a year and a half ago. Whether it's uh, Pearl Harbor or 9-11 or some of the more contemporary uh, losses that we've experienced in the e EMS community, uh, we are here today and we are gathered to remember. And if I were to ask you today, where were you and what were you doing uh, on 9-11, uh, you'd probably be able to tell me exactly where you're at and exactly uh, what you were doing. I got a phone call, I was in an office, and they said, is the TV on? I said, no, I'm working at the desk. And they said, turn the TV on. And I turned the TV on, and you turned the TV on, and you put the radio on, and you heard over the airway frequencies something that changed uh, all of our lives forever. Because that day, the front line shifted. It shifted from reading about a foreign battlefield. It shifted from uh, an attack that occurred somewhere else. It shifted from Afghanistan and a mountain holdout, it shifted to the United States of America. It shifted to our own shores. It shifted to the principal city of the United States of America. And everyone in this room suddenly became an individual who was in the trenches and on the front line in a way that you had not been before. I'm here to encourage us to remember. I'm here to say thank you. I think of my own two children and helicopter rides that they took um, off the top of the Reading Hospital and Medical Center and the paramedics and the EMTs and the medical professionals that, that took care of them. Let me say, as we are in a theme of remembering and, and not forgetting, whatever you've done in the back of that box or in a car accident, whatever you've done to assist, to provide relief, and sometimes it's our words, sometimes it's our encouragement, sometimes it's the medicine, sometimes it's the monitor, but the cumulative skill set that you employ out in the field, I assure you, has not been forgotten. Somebody out there right now, even as we're standing here, is fondly remembering your service. There was a time where I wasn't the driver and I wasn't working on somebody in the back. Um, I was laying down in the back of the ambulance myself. I mentioned my own uh, two daughters. 
My own wife uh, took an ambulance ride, and the situation was so serious without getting into details, we had two ambulances in front of our house that night. So I thank you, and I want to remind those that might see this tape that the war on terror is never going to end. The battle against evildoers is not going to end. The front line is not going to shift back overseas. You are, we are, the new front line. I, uh, I'm not going to get into my own personal narrative, but I was there the night of 9-11 at Ground Zero, and um, I was there the next day. Let me just say one thing about what I saw. I actually circumnavigated uh, the entire site, was in and out of some buildings, but just one snippet that I want to share with you. I walked over to uh, an overturned emergency response vehicle, and I looked around me and saw ambulances in various states of destruction. And uh, I saw litters out there that had gone unused. And for the first time in American history, we had firefighters, we had police officers, and we had emergency medical services personnel who were the casualties on American soil in a new war. I said that that war, in my own assessment, will never end. I'm not trying to play the pessimist. I don't want to end on a down note, but I think it's important to be honest that we've all got a responsibility in terms of vigilance. Where does the next attack come? Where does it rise from? Will it be radiological? Nobody really knows. We all think in terms of when we approach scene safety, but honestly, there's a piece of scene safety moving forward that we're all going to have to set aside. And you know that. And I admire that courage, because once that front line had permanently shifted, to some extent, we were putting ourselves at risk for the new challenges of the 21st century. What you've done in your communities will not be forgotten, and it ought not to be forgotten. I haven't forgotten what you've done for my own family. We corporately, especially on this day, have a responsibility to not forget what happened in 9-11. I think there's a piece of it that we leave this building with that's memorialization. But let me speak just for a moment on another part of it. It's preparation. I speak on behalf of Steve Barrar, the Chairman of the Veterans Affairs and Emergency Preparedness Committee. You have our vow, you have our commitment that whatever resources you need, whatever preparation you need us to come alongside to assist you with, we make that commitment today and the other 364 days of the year. God bless you and thank you for your service. Thank you, Representative Gillen. I would now like to introduce Representative Martin Causer. Representative Causer has represented the 67th Legislative District in Cameron, McKean, and Potter County since 2002. As a former EMT, 911 dispatcher and police officer, he has always been a vocal advocate for public safety and emergency services issues. This summer, he led the successful effort to obtain a much needed increase in the state's Medicaid reimbursement rate for basic and advice lab, advanced life support calls. Representative Cosby.
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm deeply honored to join you here today as we gather to remember the men and women who lost their lives while trying to save the lives of others. There's no greater sacrifice than the willingness to run toward danger, be it fire, flood, motor vehicle accident, natural disaster, or some other emergency, while everyone else is running away. But as EMS providers, in many cases, that's exactly what you do. Those of us who have worked in the field of emergency medical services, whether as volunteer or career, know full well what our brothers and sisters are made of. Grit, determination, bravery, and commitment to a mission that is greater than ourselves. But I think it wasn't until the tragedy of 9-11 that people across our state and across our country fully recognized just how devoted first responders really are. On that awful day, I was dispatching at the McKean County 911 Center. As Mark said, I think everyone remembers where they were on that day and that morning. And naturally, the radios were kind of going crazy with calls, especially uh, when Flight 93 crashed in, in Somerset County. And it was hard to fathom what was happening in our country. But I'll never forget those images of the first responders going into the burning Twin Towers in New York City, and of the EMTs and paramedics treating the survivors who made it out, along with the anger that I felt about this horrific act of terrorism. The sorrow I felt for the thousands of people who ultimately would lose their lives. And then came feelings of hope and pride. There's no greater contrast to the pure evil of the terrorists than the selflessness and heroism of our first responders. It made me proud of my fellow Americans and gave me hope that we would overcome this tragedy. There's no question these first responders are heroes, and I'm sure we can all agree that Pennsylvania first responders that we remember here today are heroes as well. But so are each of, each of you heroes. Because when someone dials 911, you rush to the scene. The treatment, care, and comfort you provide to the patient or victim means the world to them and their loved ones. You are in the business of saving lives, and there is no greater calling. While this is not the time to discuss the financial challenges and personnel shortages facing many of our emergency responder organizations, I know these issues make, make your jobs even harder. And you persevere anyway because it's what you love to do. You are driven by the same level of devotion as the men and women we honor here today. They made, the ultimate they made the ultimate sacrifice, but you also make sacrifices each and every day. Putting yourselves at risk and giving up time with your families in order to serve others. Pennsylvanians owe much gratitude to our emergency responders, both past and present. While we pay tribute to our brothers and sisters lost in the line of duty over the years, we also say thank you to all of you for your service to our communities and our commonwealth. May God bless all of our EMS providers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Cosmo. And I'd like to uh, take a moment to acknowledge some other dignitaries that are present. Representative Keith Gillespie, Representative Francis Ryan, 
H. Silcox, again from Senator Randy Velakovich's office, several of our regional council directors from the Emergency Medical Services here in Pennsylvania, and of course the Bureau of EMS staff, we thank you all for your presence today. In 1998, the United States Congress, through concurrent resolutions of the Senate and House of Representatives, designated the National EMS Memorial Service to be held annually as the official EMS Memorial Service in the United States. The purpose of the National EMS Memorial Service is to honor those emergency medical services personnel who have died in the line of duty and to recognize the ultimate sacrifice they have made for their fellow man. During the service, a family member or agency representative will be presented with a United States flag that is flown over the United States Capitol, denoting the honoree's service to their country. A white rose representing their undying love, along with a medallion signifying their eternal memory. As part of the service, each person being recognized will be represented by their state flag that is carried by an honor guard. And, that the last name, and, and after the last name has been read, there will be a moment of silence followed by a last call and the playing of taps. The names of those who are honored appear at the National EMS Memorial Tree of Life. Pre-hospital providers are killed every year in the performance of their duties. An oak tree of life honors the memory of these emergency medical services personnel. On this tree are bronze leaves with the individual names of those who have died in the line of duty. The oak leaf has historically been accepted as a symbol of strength, valor, and solid character. All are common characteristics of these honored men and women. With honor, the following Pennsylvania EMS providers who lost their lives in the line of duty and service to the residents of the Commonwealth will be presented. Please stand. Good afternoon. Samantha Hagens, Camp JC, Stroudsburg. Ethan Amsbaugh, Priority Volunteer Response Ambulance, Mount Union. Robert Ashby, Christiana Ambulance, Gap. Brenda Bauer, City of Reading Fire, Reading. David J. Blossom, Wilkins Churchill, Rescue One, Wilkins. Walter L. Bricker, Metal Township Fire and Ambulance Company, Bannettsburg. John Buckner, City of Scranton Fire Department Ambulance, Scranton. Jeanette M. Christ, University Medevac, Lehigh Valley Hospital, Allentown. Kelly A. Conti, Critical Care Diversified Enterprises, West Mifflin. John Demkowski, Lackawanna Ambulance Service, Lack Lancaster, excuse me, Scranton. Bruce H. Ditlow, St. Joseph Hospital, Lancaster. Klein D. Wire, Susquehanna Health System EMS Department, Williamsport. Kevin A. Alfison, Medic Rescue Ambulance Service, Beaver Falls. 
Donald J. Felker, Collingsdale Fire Company No. 1, Collingsdale. Dale C. Francis, Lifestar Ambulance Corps, Quakertown. Michael Boz Garvin, Second Alarmers Association and Rescue Squad, Willow Grove. John M. Goodwin, Guthrie One Helicopter, Sayre. Thomas Gruen, Tonconic Community Ambulance Association, Tonconic. Richard A. Hartley, Derry Township Fire Police, Lewistown. Mark W. Hostler, Guthrie One Helicopter, Sayer. Wesley Hostetter, Black Tuscarora EMS, East Waterford. Daniel E. Keller, Fayette EMS, Connellsville. Sean M. Kramer, Hamburg Ambulance Service, West Lawn, Hamburg. James S. Landis, University Medevac, Lehigh Valley Hospital, Allentown. John F. Legico, Parkersburg Ambulance and Fire Company, Parkersburg. Janice Keen, West End Ambulance, Johnstown. Kevin Mathetone, Bucks County, Morrisville, Levittown. Herbert W. McKay, American Medical Response, Philadelphia. Daniel W. McIntosh, Ben Salem EMS, Ben Salem. Harry R. Moore, City of Duquesne EMS, Duquesne. Michael R. Murphy, Penn Star, Philadelphia. Barry John Nagel, Silver Spring Ambulance and Rescue, New Kingston. Deborah J. Knoll, Guthrie One Helicopter, Sayre. Elwood C. Queen Sr., Irvona Volunteer Ambulance Service, Irvona. Larry Opperly, Alpha Fire Company Community Ambulance, State College. Ken Pronti, Tri Community Ambulance, Monongahela. Patricia A. Riccobano, Lehigh Valley Hospital, Allentown. David Sauter, Leola Ambulance Association, Leola. Heinz Schultz, Emergency Care Life Star of Erie, Erie. Edward E. Soper, Hops Ambulance, LaRaysville. William R. Spence, CJ System Aviation Group, West Mifflin. Ethel M. Sparrows, Willow Street Ambulance Association, Willow Street. Richard J. Stark, Thornhurst Volunteer Fire Rescue Ambulance Squad, Thornhurst. Joseph M. Vagnier, Monroeville Fire Department, Monroeville. Robert Vetter, Mon Valley EM, Monesson. John M. Watson, Moscow Volunteer Fire Department Hose Company, Ambulance, Moscow. Kevin L. Witherlow, St. Joseph Hospital, Lancaster. Gregory Wenzel, First Aid and Safety Patrol, Lebanon. David A. Woomer, Mount Carmel Ambulance, Rescue Squad, Mount Carmel.
We are eternally grateful for the service, the 49 individuals that we honored and remembered today. On behalf of the Pennsylvania EMS Provider Foundation, the Bureau of EMS, and all EMS providers across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, words cannot express my gratitude for your presence today. Go in peace. Thank you.